Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 50. This week I've got something pretty exciting to show. I'm going to be going over the Multi Flash Plus, which is now finished. And as always, I'll be releasing the circuit board files and the source code to the open source community. So before we get into the Multi Flash Plus, I want to show you people the Multi Flash because the Multi Flash builds upon this. The, the concept with the Multi Flash board was we wanted a way of connecting it to the camera axe, which you do here, and then you can trigger up to four flashes or cameras at the same time, which is the common case. Um, but everything has to get triggered at the same time because there's no um, intelligence to this board. It just uh, safely triggers four cameras and or flashes at the same time. And there's the battery supply. So that, that's pretty simple. But then people came along and said, what I really want is something a lot more flexible that will still trigger a bunch of flashes and cameras, but gives me a lot more control over when the triggering happens. And this is the Multi-Flash Plus board. I don't have it in the case right now because I wanted to show you a few things about the circuit board. First off, it's got an LCD so that you can see the settings that you're changing and a bunch of buttons so that you can change those settings. And it'll let you trigger cameras and or flashes in lots of different sequences and um, things like that. It's got these LEDs to indicate which flash and or camera is being triggered. And uh, instead of just four cameras, it's got ports for six cameras and or flashes. And then it's got um, an input and an output here so that you can actually daisy chain these together and uh, have basically unlimited number of uh, flashes connected. So if you, you know, if you daisy chain, you know, four of these together, then you'd have four times six or 24 flashes total supported. And if you look on the other side, we've got the uh, battery port here. Um, there's actually a secondary battery port in case people want to uh, do something with the case to make it uh, more permanent. Um, but normally people just plug the batteries into this that are supplied uh, with the uh, Multi-Flash Plus. Uh, here's a microcontroller that gives it all of this intelligence. It's actually the same microcontroller being used in the full-blown camera axe, so it's plenty powerful. And down here we've got a bank of uh, opto-isolators and resistors controlling those so that it, again, will safely control up to six cameras and or flashes with the focus and the shutter when you're using cameras actually being controlled separately. So... Here are the, the cases. This is the back plate and this is the front plate. And it's a little hard to see on the, uh, the screen here, but um, you can see that I've actually had um, all the words you want engraved into the uh, uh, acrylic. And uh, this is all laser cut and I'm doing it through Pinoco. So uh, I think they do a pretty good job and it's not crazy expensive. So maybe more of the uh, Camerax products will be going to something like this. Let me know what you think about the uh, laser cut cases here. And when you put them onto the uh, board, this is what you get. Uh, so that's an overview of the so hardware, and now we'll go on to software. So now let's power it up and look at the software. So first off, the uh, LCD screen is actually backlit, which is nice for dark environments. And now we're in the software, and you start off with mode select, and there are three major modes to the Multi-Flash Plus. Mirror mode makes it behave similar to the standard Multi-Flash where all six ports will get triggered at exactly the same time. So there are no uh, different options to select. When it's in mirror mode, it just takes whatever's coming in and replicates it on all six ports. Now the series mode is basically going to trigger all of your flashes in a row. So it'll start off with one and go through to uh, flash six if you have that many connected. So you hit the forward button to see the different options that you have in uh, the series mode. So you can set pre-focus to no if you're using a flash and if you're using uh, cameras you probably would want to change that to yes. And you can set the delay you want between each flash or camera. So right now, it's set, the, the first three numbers are seconds, the second three numbers are milliseconds, and the third three numbers are microseconds. So you get a lot of controlled granularity here. 
and we'll just leave it at the default of 100 milliseconds. Now duration is the amount of time you want each uh, entity to be triggered. Now, th this is useful uh, if you want to trigger a camera in bulb mode. It's also useful if you want to uh, set this much smaller perhaps. Um, smaller than the uh, length and then what will happen is the duration will be finished and it can actually circle back and you could start taking additional pictures uh, or flashes afterwards um, but you need to make sure your duration is long enough for your camera if you're using a camera so um, for most cameras you'd probably want to use at least 100 uh, micro milliseconds. Um, I'll just put it back to the default of one second. And on this menu you control how many flashes you want. So if you have it set to six that means all six ports are filled with a flash. If you set it to one then only the first port is filled with a flash and, and so on. So those are the options in series mode. Now if I hit the activate button that will make it ready to uh, actually trigger the flashes or cameras. So I will plug a camera axe into the device now. And when I trigger the camera axe, you'll see that four lights are lighting up and that's because I have the number of flashes set to four. Now if we turn this off oops. And we turn that to six, all six lights will all six of these will get triggered and if we go and change the duration to a hundred milliseconds now what I'll expect is the lights will sort of race um, from here to here and then instead of being stuck on and um, for, for a second they'll actually come back and, and recycle as long as I'm triggering things on the camera axe. So let's hit activate and let's go. So there, you, it's kind of an interesting lighting pattern but if you actually had flashes plugged in they would actually all be uh, triggering triggered every time one of those lights turned on. Now if we go back to the mode select and we make it custom, this allows you to, com gives you complete control over every one of the flashes or cameras. Uh, so this is the mode you'd want to use if you were daisy chaining a bunch of the multi-flash pluses together or if you just wanted to have more flexibility over when each flash or camera was taking its picture. So um, we'll say no to prefocus. And so now this is the delay you want before um, uh, flash or camera number one goes. So that's one second. And then duration of flash number one is going to be one second. And now delay of flash number two is two seconds. So that's actually going to be starting right when um, flash number one is ending because it had a delay of one second plus a duration of one second and a duration of two. And basically what you're going to see here is the duration and delay for each one is the duration is always one second by default and the delay is always just one, one second later. So uh, we expect sort of the lights to light up in sequence and um, you you have complete control in this mode over over how it's going to work but I'll just sort of demonstrate it um, so when I trigger it you can see this light kind of sequence through <clears throat> okay so that that's a very quick summary of the options that are available in the software now I've always believed that the best way to actually measure the time of these 
high-speed photography triggering devices is to look at them on a scope and actually see when the signals are propagating through the system. So that's what I've hooked up here. I've got uh, flash 1 and flash 2 um, occupied with these two flashes and I've got the camera axe that'll trigger the multi-flash plus. And first we're just going to show you in mirror mode what happens uh, on the scope. So if I activate that and I hit trigger, um, what we've got, and you can't even really see the lines, but there's a yellow line and a blue line, and uh, we this is showing how close together they, uh, they are. Um, basically, you want them on top of each other just like this is, and each division is 50 microseconds, so there's really no lag between um, when one flash and the next is getting triggered in mirror mode, which is good. That's exactly what we wanted. We wanted both flashes to get triggered at the same time. So, if we then go to series mode, um, we will set up a delay. So zero delay would look the same as this. It would be one graph on top of another. So let's uh, just change it a very small amount, 10, 10 microseconds. So that's a very small amount of lag. We want to make sure that that's going to show up uh, on the scope and equate to about 10 microseconds. So let's reset and we'll trigger again. And there, we'll zoom in a little bit you can see that there's actually about 10 microseconds difference between when one flash gets triggered and the other flash gets triggered, which is awesome. It's exactly what we're looking for. So now I'm going into the software and I'll change the uh, delay to 50 microseconds and make sure that that looks like 50 microseconds. And yeah, that's approximately 50 microseconds. You know, these low numbers um, are the hard ones. I mean, everything's working as expected, and this is sort of shown that, you know, the timing with this multi-flash plus is, is awesome. Uh, it wasn't this good to start with. I definitely had to uh, put some optimization into the software, which uh, allowed us to get these accurate results that I was looking for. But um, at this point, it's working, you know, better than I would have expected. I mean, the micros processor is, is running at 16 micro megahertz so you should be able to get timing like this but a lot of times things don't work out as as well as you had planned but in this case everything's working ideally I would say so um, I feel pretty confident that people could take you know this multi flash plus go out there and, and use it to trigger multiple flashes or multiple cameras um, in really unique and, and kind of cool ways so there's a ton of things you can do with the Multi-Flash Plus. I'm sure I'm not even thinking of all of them, but um, it's useful for both cameras where you might want to set up a bunch of cameras to take like a bullet time effect where you take a whole bunch of photos at the same time and then you can rotate around that object sort of in, in post-processing by joining multiple frames together. Uh, or you can use multiple flashes like I've set up here and actually... Uh, trigger multiple flashes onto one photo so that you can, like on a droplet, capture multiple positions of the droplet um, with different flashes. So the last thing I'll show you is I've, I've kind of set up all of these flashes to the Multi-Flash Plus and they're, um, the, the, it's set up in a series configuration so we're just going to cycle through the flashes. And here we go. Kind of like a disco. Um, so that's uh, what I wanted to show you today. And I would uh, like to thank everyone in the community who helped make the multi-flash uh, possible. And uh, I'd draw special attention to Bill and Rick. They uh, volunteered a bunch of extra time to review the hardware and uh, helped significantly with writing the software. They, they've actually written huge portions of the code uh, for the Multi-Flash Plus, and I thank them a lot.